Ah, I see you guys. What's going on? That's good to see you. Good to see you too. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know what the title of this episode of Black Sheep Radio would be, but I would say my early leading candidate is I'd kill for dog shit. (laughs) (laughs) Those are the last words Mark said to me. just before what did the dog leave uh, what happened uh what did the dog leave on your porch a a bird head oh the, the head of a bird not the <laughs> not a bird body just the head and it was a blue jay and the reason i know it was a blue jay um what? there was some blue there were some blue feathers in his water bowl which is a dead giveaway that he was responsible and then just, I don't really know what happened in the yard, but there was at least three altercations with the bird because there were three different piles of blue feathers. <laughs> oh my, beautiful, beautiful blue feathers, <laughs> might I add. Uh, so the first thing we're going to have to find out on Black Sheep Radio tonight is who's more traumatized, Mark or the person who actually got the rest of the blue jay? <laughs> and how many were there, for Christ's sakes? <laughs> Oh. That is that is absolutely terrifying, honestly. It, I, so it was I've, never heard, I've never heard of a I've never heard of a dog fucking up a bird. Yeah. See, I don't know I don't know if he if he killed or if he found it and just brought it for us, but he certainly he certainly dismembered it in the yard. <laughs> what did you do with it? Did you like have a ceremony or something are you are you big on like if you see a dead animal can you just go over and pick it up and like put it in a garbage bag or whatever because i'm no, not really no no the only the only reprieve i had from that normal fear of picking up a dead animal is that i knew this thing wasn't going to come back to life because it was, <laughs> you know it was the worst just... thing you know the worst thing is my wife has relatives who would have actually answered the question what did you do with it they would have simply said it was absolutely delicious <laughs> loved it <laughs> My buddy's first reaction, I guess it's, I guess he's a Red Sox fan. (laughs) (laughs) You're listening to Black Sheep Radio. Featuring Ben McVie. I don't muffle peanuts. Chris Brown. You know, you guys have kids. I don't have kids. I have cats. You know, the, the cats are kind of a handful. I'm not gonna lie. Kids, kids are much, kids are much worse, right? That's true. The cats, the cats can be a handful. And Mark Lefave. That's another casualty of COVID that I didn't even really think about was ter- terrorism. Like it's just rate, review, subscribe, and share, or join the conversation at BSR Podcast on Facebook and at Radio Underscore Sheep on Instagram and Twitter. Here we go. Yeah, Chris might be right. Cats are a handful, but you probably wouldn't have dead blue jays if you would have gone with a cat instead of the dog. Mm -hmm. The thing about cats, the thing is about cats is it's (laughs) I I can't say that it's more twisted than finding just a a, a disembodied disembodied head on your doorstep. But the thing is, a cat keeps it alive. That's what's fucked up about cats. Yeah, Yeah, they grow in their mouth. They hold they, they hold a mouse in their mouth, but they and then they drop it and it runs away. They're just screwing with it. Yeah, gr- growing up with cats, like I've had, you know, most of the cats that I've had are just complete fat slobs and could never, they couldn't catch their tail, let alone a bird in the backyard. But every once in a while, like one of them would take down a bird. And when you found them, it wouldn't be dead. It would just still be alive, but just barely, barely hanging on. And the cat is just batting it around as like, oh, as if it's a toy or something. It's questioning really it. Dark. Yeah, it's really <laughs> my wife, my wife, Amanda, absolutely hates blue jays. And I swear she's walking by with a, a basket of laundry and drops an envelope next to me that says, dead blue jays and then little hearts <laughs> <laughs> underneath it so victory victory for the dog in this house. go go monty go that is that is a definite monty win right there we have blue we know we have tons of them outside of our place up north and they wake you up and they screech and it really upsets her for some reason they like are have- the uh yeah they are the assholes of the bird world as well like if you've ever studied anything about blue jays like they go into other birds nests and take their eggs like they are such Jeez. dicks here's the thing i don't <laughs> understand about canada for a great country we know great ways to show it off but the birds we associate ourselves mm. with are fucking assholes yeah blue jays and canada geese come on 
<laughs> snap your finger right off, they will. Like, I swear, <laughs> no, seriously. Like, the Americans, the Americans who we, we claim superiority to have a fucking eagle. The eagle. <laughs> we have a goose and a blue jay. <laughs> It's true. Oh. It's true. What it allowed us to call our money the loony and the toony, though. So think about that. <laughs> <laughs> is the beaver like secretly bloodthirsty as well? Like, is there something there with mm. it? Beavers are jerks, jerks too. Like all of our animals. You're right, Benny. All of our animals are kind of dicks. <laughs> like, they are. The beavers too. They ruin. They ruin areas. They siphon off water. Like I know they're doing it because of their own habitat, but I don't know if moose are at. Else. I don't know if moose are assholes, but I'm I definitely sure I definitely wouldn't call them one. That's for sure. <laughs> no. So um, <laughs> one of the things uh, you, you know we're using we're using this this new program. Uh, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> maybe 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 the um, <clears throat> the video is a big dead giveaway uh, for people. If if I manage to get this video up by the time uh, this is all released and everything, um, <laughs> but there's a couple things that that we can do with this program that that. I've been, you know, thinking about ways that I can have fun with it in interesting ways and be creative with it and whatever. And and uh, I stumbled across a picture today, and I was like, it was it was probably one of the most weird things I've seen in a while. And you haven't I'm seen, like, you haven't seen a didn't... blue jay head on your back step, then, my friend. <laughs> this, may rival, this, <laughs> this may actually rival that. I'm not. <laughs> oh, I'm excited. Okay, so it's very unsettling. Um, it, it stuck with me all day. I didn't know what to do with it uh, until you know I logged on here and realized I'm like, oh yeah, we can screen share things. Okay, so is, let's see this thing. Which is really exciting. So I'm excited. Like again. Are you sure you guys want to see this? Because like, what well, you can't unsee. Well, you can't. What I'm you can't un. Yeah, you un can't offer it either. You can't tee it up like that. It. But what it's is it? Things. Let it's, me see. I'm excited now. It's one of those things. Like, like you have to be sure that you want to that you want to see it because it's it's a, little, it's a little dramatic. You guys can handle it. You guys can handle it. Why do you sign a fucking waiver? Come on. <laughs> How bad can All right, it be? It's coming. All right, it's coming. Let's see. All right. Okay, can you see that? Oh. <laughs> So, what the fuck is that? Oh, that's, that's Daniel Craig. That's James fucking Bond. What happened? It's not real, is it? It's real. It's real. I assure you, it's real. So, so for people that are just listening, blonde, James Blonde. So, so for people just listening to the podcast, uh, I, I. You're great. You should be grateful that you're only listening because it's a picture of Daniel Craig, a younger Daniel Craig. Stick it up on our studio. Facebook page. You, you can't. You, you got to. That's something you got to share with the world, man. We'll, we'll definitely stick that up. So it's basically Dan, just Daniel Craig with long hair, but it's so much more than just Daniel Craig with long hair. It it speaks to, I don't know, I don't know. No, it's like he left. He left uh, MI6 and joined Charlie's Angels. <laughs> Baywatch. <laughs> joined Baywatch. Angels. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh, else, oh my oh, god! Man. That is yeah. something else. I just really had to. Share that. I just really had to share that with you guys because it was, uh, you know, like I said, I saw it this morning and I just couldn't get it out of my head, and I'm like, I got to find, I got to find something to do with this, and you know, would, would do you regret seeing that? He, no. there's no, there's no way that he is not trying desperately to get that picture taken off of the internet. Like that picture of Beyonce where her face is like this, or whatever, and the head dancing and she got all mad no. that people were sharing it. He's, he's fighting to get that off the internet. I'm, I'm not upset at all, actually. I want, I want to take the time to thank you because every time I see him as James Bond, I'm like, Jesus, I'm never going to get laid again. Look at that man. <laughs> like, look at that friggin' guy. He is, mm. a, he is a male specimen. So thank you for <laughs> making him not that in a, in a single split second. It was, oh, it was this wonderful. is a, yeah, this is a testament again to the fact that men tend to get better looking as we get older. We tend to <laughs> age like a fine wine. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Because he looks like he should be selling hacky sacks somewhere with that hairdo. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that guy works at Canna Cabana and sold me papes last week. That is something. That is. That is, <laughs> that is something. Have you guys ever hacky sacked? <laughs> no, no, I'm, I haven't. I'm big on hacky sack. I used you to be are, aren't you? Oh, oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, yeah, I can see that. Oh, 
it's one. I, of those, this... It's one. It's the ketchup of hobbies. <laughs> It really is. It, it that's you can't no. <laughs> so, hacky sack. Hacky sack is. Why don't you do something more, more grown up? Like get yourself a scooter. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, hacky, this... sa hacky sacks are actually much more of a practical hobby than you would think, and I say that because, and you're gonna say think that I'm a genius. This has happened multiple times. I don't know about that right no. now, buddy. I, I, yeah, so so okay. so when you go to um like when I okay, when I when I was younger, we me and some friends, we used to do a lot of like tra road tripping to concerts and stuff. That's kind of all we did, right? Um yeah. and a lot of them were in the US, you know, and it's really difficult um like you know we, we smoke pot i still smoke pot whatever back then we smoked a lot of it we weren't about to bring it across the border right yep so what we devised we devised this plan to actually be able to get it across the border and what you do is when you're at a music festival you know you just bust out the hacky sack at the music festival and you know within it's it's within four or five minutes you have somebody showing up offering to sell you drugs it's like it's uncanny <laughs> now, okay. it, it's like moth okay. to a flame yeah. for I, pot. Scales. I had not considered this angle. It's true. Uh, I, I, I relent. I, I will give you this. It is a surefire way to to tell someone that you want some weed. Yeah. You it's could also disgusting. you could also get dreadlocks. You could yeah. wear a Bob Marley t shirt. Yeah. Well, no, you don't need the T-shirt. Chances are you already smell like his friggin' underwear. <laughs> if you're playing hacky sack, there's a very good chance that you I, smell. Do people still hacky sack? Like, I, I, is that oh, yeah. still a thing? Really? I, you know what? You know what's? Funny? I would have thought they would have gone with pogs, like at that same time that they both petered I'm out. Sorry, fuck, just, fuck hacky sack. <laughs> no, you smell you smell like day four at Woodstock '99 if you play with a hacky sack. No, it's not even the good Woodstock. You do not even know the shitty Woodstock, the one where Limp Bizkit was a headliner <laughs> place on fire. That Woodstock, and you smell like day four. <laughs> so, uh, if you have a hacky sack, I did it out for the nookie. <laughs> just just nookie. to tag this to infuriate you guys a little bit more. I didn't just have like a regular hacky sack. Like I'm sure you guys. Oh no, I'm, I'm sure, sure it had a with like the bean ones that are like kind of stiff or whatever. Like that wasn't. I was at the point where that wasn't really good enough for you know my caliber of sacking. So I ended up. <laughs> oh my god. Is that uh, what you call it? <laughs> Hacking? So I so I ordered How some. Yeah. You guys want to go never... outside and sack for a bit? Is that what you yeah. is that what you say to your buddies? So the, the the one that I have, I, I still have them somewhere, but it's made of suede. A sw it's actually oh. suede. Right. Like, I'm That's not even kidding. Do you exactly. use that though, or do you just keep it still in the package so it's worth something in fifty years? <laughs> I haven't used it since the last competition, actually. I, I put it <laughs> You're like the guy that pulls out his own pool cue. What do you call it? Is that like a, a sack off? Yeah. Is it a sack, sack off? off? Is that what it is? Oh, oh God. I don't even want to know what the trophy looks like. You know something? I'm gonna, you know what? I'm going to go out and I for something that repeatedly hits surfaces at a high velocity, that's the material you want it to be made of. Fucking suede. Mm. I'm going to go out yeah. and buy me a suede Crazy. football. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's absolutely it's absolutely ridiculous. But there's like a legit sport. You would be you'd be horrified. Judging by your reaction and the fact that I have a suede hacky sack, like you would be horrified. There's like see, I feel like, like, in, like yeah, I feel like they board. have yeah. they have the hacky sack competition the same weekend as they have those like vaping competitions where <laughs> they see who can blow out the most vape smoke. I feel like that's oh, the yeah. same crew. The cloud. Well, the guy the guy who wins that contest has. <laughs> A hacky sack. Who <laughs> wins a hacky sack? That's what you wins, win. Yeah. <laughs> a suede and, hacky sack. <laughs> and and most likely bad credit. That's safe. That's yeah. safe as well. There's, there's not most likely about it. <laughs> so do you have other hacky sacks? Like aside from the the, 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 the suede one? No, I I no, no, oh, you kept so that one. Did I, you I have a have collection of one? Well, you, you just lose them, right? Like I didn't, I didn't, curl, I didn't collect. How do you lose them? Like, it? Do you have them up on a shelf, like rifles in a case, sort of thing, like. 
Yeah, is it like marbles? If you so, lose a hacky sack, do you lose your sack and like you have to try to win someone else's sack <laughs> next time? Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if there's actually like a competition element to hacky sacking. Like all I ever did was like busted out at college and just like people would show up. It's weird though with hacky sacking. Like you you would play and then you people just join. Like strangers just come up to you and join. Yeah, it was always the coolest thing about it that I enjoyed. So I met a lot of cool people that way for sure. I have yeah. one. I have one final question for you about it. Do sure. you in your house have a beanbag chair, or have you ever owned a beanbag chair? Because I feel like a hacky sack is just like the little brother of the beanbag chair. Like you likely own both. Um, I had, yeah, I've definitely had a. Be- I don't have a beanbag chair now because I, um, I'm well, yeah, because you're an adult. Back hurts, so I don't. <laughs> I guess I can't get off it. But um, yeah, I definitely had a hacky sack or a hacky sack. Fuck. A, a beanbag um, chair. A bean, but yeah, yeah. A beanbag chair at one point for sure. Yeah. yeah. You guys have never had a beanbag chair before? Um, as I, an adult, I don't think so. I don't <laughs> think so. <laughs> Benny, I couldn't picture you sitting on a beanbag chair no. after work. Like just, <laughs> just a quick rest on the beanbag chair. <laughs> 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 Last time we spoke, you were eating filet mignon. I can't picture you eating filet mignon on a beanbag chair. <laughs> I gotta tell you that uh, that 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 steak turned out to be pretty nice. Yeah, hey, I quick bet. question because I thought about it afterwards. It was like tenderloin on the to be filet mignon. Does it have to be bacon wrapped? Like that's the idea of that's, the filet mignon. That's what that's what it makes yeah, it we, a we, filet mignon. We were yeah. we were baconless. We went with one species and we went with abnormally that's large fair. pieces of tenderloin on mm, the nice. barbecue. It worked out well. Yeah, um, that's good. It stuff. worked out well. Uh, here's our built-in black sheep radio segue. Brought to you by. The coach and lantern. You see what I did there with the steak and the restaurant and the. I like see, it. See how that went. We, that we've got like to get, our, we've got to get the seg. We got to get the segue uh, sponsored. So Chris is pressing forward here with trying to do something new with the technology we've got now. Yeah, I can't speak and do this at the same time, or I'm going to get a nosebleed on camera. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I thought I could smell he's, paper burning. <laughs> he's been uh, he's been totally geeking out with this thing. So anyway, yeah. well, before we get to that, uh, Krista, she's a manager at the Coach and Lantern. She's going to be joining us in, in a few minutes, like live. Mm. Yeah, yeah is, is she in the room room green room yet? Room. She's she's uh, coming. We've got she's a bunch coming. of questions to ask her, but Chris, I, I got to ask you: like, is there a chance that you've overthought? The, the technology here <laughs> um i don't know man i like it's it's possible i i have an ipad going here i have my mixer i have my mm-hmm. phone i have a water bottle it's there's there's a lot there's a lot going on here you're you're sulu right now <laughs> <laughs> and like I, i'm only sure. i'm only asking awesome. I'm only asking because part of the technology is is video capabilities and we can see each uh, each other we're, we're each in our homes uh, but Chris is occasionally throughout the first 20 minutes of conversation here has looked like the kid who's peeing in the water at the beach. He's just, <laughs> just that this, pleasant, that, peaceful look about it. You know what I mean? That it's like the <laughs> thousand yard stare. Yeah, exactly. he's, he's surrounded by gadgetry and loving every minute. of it. I know the face. Well, I know that face very, very well. <laughs> Um, it's probably that feeling of having an actual radio studio now at your house because that's essentially what this program allows us to do is have a lot of those yeah. same features and fun. And I was joking around with Chris before you came on today, Ben, is uh, how many episodes did we do without this? And all, all it cost us was $48. I know, right? <laughs> could, could have done that a year ago for fuck's sake. I know. Sakes. I know. <laughs> Okay, so hey, no. should, we, should I should I let Krista join the conversation here? Sure, why not? Yeah, and, absolutely. All right, so let me see if I can do this. I'm pretty excited. Oh, boom! There she is. Hello. Oh, hey. there she hey. is. How are you? Good, good, good. Nice to see you again. We, I feel like we've you. done this before. Weird. <laughs> Yeah, having, so, a, having a moment of deja vu. Right. So, do we do we pretend this is the first time we've met, or do we 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 probably should acknowledge the fact that we had this awesome conversation with Krista last week and lost the whole thing? Yeah, she was amazing. 
too bad. It was, it was too. The thing is, is the interview was too good for the old mm-hmm. program. So we needed a new program to be able to handle the uh, intensity that that uh, interview last week gave us. Exactly. I'd just like to start this interview or, uh, interview by, uh, you know, apologizing for wasting your time last time <laughs> because we completely. Oh, I have so I much to do it. when I have so much to do when I work 12 hours during a pandemic in a restaurant. So, <laughs> yeah. so oh, much I, to do. I don't want to apologize for wasting your time last week. I want to apologize for how much worse we're going to ruin it this time. I love oh, it. you thought last week was a waste of your time? You got you see, you see nothing yet. <laughs> Especially because I'm going to try and word for word my exact questions from last time. Go. But we've got Krista Phillips on uh, on the show right now, and she is a manager, as Benny said, at the Coach and Lantern in Ancaster, and. Um, Spoke last week, and we, I mean, we'll, we'll talk about it again today, about sort of that, po- well, we're not really post-COVID, I guess, but as we sort of leave COVID and leave lockdowns and things like that behind us, um, I mean, what, what the restaurant scene looks like for you guys right now. I, I, I'm sure you're limited hours. I know that you guys were pumping out amazing menus uh, when you guys were locked down. So now that the doors are open again, people get to... Um, uh, experience the Coach and Lantern for themselves. For anyone that's never been there, anything that you can stuff inside a Yorkshire pudding, they're they're all about it. So it's uh, it's the place to go to get your Yorkie stuffed, basically. But what's uh, what's work like for you right now? What's uh, what's the bar scene like? Um, working ten hours a week, ten people in the restaurant. Um, it's slow. Uh, people have been super supportive with takeout. So we've been very, very lucky. Um, the fact that we're in Ancaster helps um, because it's a yep. smaller community and they don't have as many restaurants to support. So they're very loyal to the ones that they do go to. Um, so we've been very lucky. So you guys have 10 people allowed. Are, do, you, do you still have that guy that sits at the bar for six hours or is he not allowed, is he not allowed in anymore? Because um, it's like, uh, Dave, you got to go. You, <laughs> you just, you got you to gotta get yourself out. Unfortunately for us, the we can't even seat our bar right now because the tables in the restaurant are close to the bar seats. Oh, mm. So we can't seat the bar. So, you know, we get, his name's not Dave, it's Don, but we get Don once a day. He comes in at lunch and have his, has his couple of glasses of wine and um, has an appetizer. But they're all super considerate about the fact that we um, can only have 10 people in. So people don't, like, overstay their welcome. Um People have been really good, really good. Nice. That's awesome. So one of the things uh, that that one of the changes that a lot of the restaurants made last uh, last wave of the lockdown, so late 2020, was was the uh, reservations um, long, far in advance. So like a lot of times you had to register. Like it's, it's it was way more uh, involved, as well as like time constraints on how long you're willing to be there or how long you're allowed to be at the one table like is that something that you enjoyed and you see uh you know m- moving forward like do you, do you see that restaurant do you think that restaurants are going to continue with that once the pandemic is over because i've heard a lot of people like a lot of servers um you know people stay at tables for a really long time because they spend so much time taking pictures of their food you know do you, do you think that might be helpful <laughs> to you um uh-huh. moving forward moving past this Um, For us, I don't think it would be so helpful. For a lot of Russians, I think it would be. Um, But for us, our motto is come often, sit long. So I don't want to have to kick people out (laughs) after an hour and a half. That that is a (laughs) pre-COVID motto, that's for sure. Mm. Touch everything. You know? (laughs) Speak Um, nicely. Come in. Now get the fuck out. Yeah, exactly. That's how I feel right now. I feel like I'm like constantly pushing people out the door. I'm like, yeah. okay, guys, like I feel like I could put egg timers on the table and be like, yeah. okay, guys, your timer went off. Time to go. Get, you know, get your mask on. Out you go. Yeah. But no, you like play people, like the Oscars. people have been really good. Like, I mean, um, the higher end restaurants probably find it a lot harder um, having the time restraints because. You, it's impossible to serve that kind of meal quickly. For us, it's pub food. So people can come in, yeah. have a couple of drinks, have a nap, have dinner, and go. You know, where if you go to a place, any like the kegger, a place like that even, you know, you want to enjoy a couple yeah, like of a drinks. And yeah, like, it's different. I have a question for the group. 
how good does a meal have to be? How often is it acceptable on a weekly basis? No, on a per restaurant visit basis. Let's say you visited five now. How often is it acceptable to take a picture of your meal? Mm. <laughs> I, I very rarely, I, I can't think of very many instances where I've taken a picture of my meal. I feel like I'm I also take... a 41 year old man too, so. I feel like I never did before, but I feel like I take pictures now to support the restaurant groups and post it to the restaurant <laughs> yeah, group yeah, yeah. so that everybody else yeah. can see what I'm eating. But for yeah. me, no, I'm not like That's a, the manager I'm in not, you. Though. I'm not. Yeah, that is the manager in me. I'm like, look at yeah. this. You should all try this. Help support yeah. this place because I want to eat it again when this is all over. Yeah. Yeah. Do you do like hashtag yum, hashtag eat no, more, hashtag no lunch? Hashtags. Okay. I'm 45. No, I'm too old okay. for hashtags. Hashtag nom nom. Is, is there, is there, um, I have a lot of questions about this. Okay. So but before we get to the important stuff, cause I asked the stupid questions. Here. This is the important stuff. This is the important <laughs> stuff. Uh, is there like a threshold of quality of meal you should, now I'm operating under the assumption that you are going to be sharing this picture with other people. Okay. That, that, that's the assumption. Okay. We're back on the pictures, is there a okay. threshold of quality of meal where if you're taking a picture of it, you're not so much showing off your food as you're just an asshole, is, I guess is my question. <laughs> have you ever been asked to, have you ever, Krista, have you ever asked, had customers ask you to hold the food out so that you could be the <laughs> hand model for their food selfie? No, I'm not the Vanna White. Oh, um, I wish. You tell me guys, that you guys open eat. tomorrow? <laughs> I live in fear of you coming to the restaurant. <laughs> oh, he's, he's, he's going to be Don like and Ben at the bar. Right. I, I just, I, I, I can, I'm, I'm good with it. Like my wife does it a lot, right? Mm. And I, I'm not all that down in pictures of your food, but she does it, and it's fine. It's like her finding my my socks in bed, sort of thing. You know, it's just one of those things you sort of tolerate, right? But I, I, I do. I think it's got to be like a, it's got to be a piece de resistance if you're going to take a picture of the meal and then share it with people. Because otherwise, I don't give a rat's ass what you ate. Mm. That's just first that's of, just me talking pre-COVID. Again, for, pre-COVID. first of all, Come in, I love on. that you. First of all, I love that you started whispering because you know your wife can hear you. <laughs> yeah. So that's one of my faves, right there. He's at the dinner table um, the, with his wife right now. The other thing is, is that the people that take the pictures of their food that are still in the takeout container, they put that on a plate. Come on. Don't put that, <laughs> that on a plate. That presentation is everything here. Mm-hmm. Put it on a plate. Here's, I will say, though, Ben, it would be more concerning to me if somebody took pictures of their food but then didn't post them, like just kept yeah, what them are those for for? themselves for later. What are, what are those like, for? oh, these were the meals I had in February. Look, they're all dated. <laughs> Yeah, Make I know. Collage. Facebook memories. Yeah, like, here's you know, some memories. Facebook. That's the kind of like the person who has, you know, tons of pictures of their cats on their phone, only they're not their cats. <laughs> other, yeah, other people's cats. Other people's, other people's cats. People, other people's cats, you know. Down like, with OPC. In, 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 fair, in fairness to the people that do take pictures of their food, which is mostly uh, in this group, probably just me. Uh, but some of these, <laughs> some of these pictures... <laughs> Um, some of these, some of these, some of these foods, bear with me here. Some of the food that they send when they send it out, like it's just, it, they make it so that it, it's for a picture. You have to take a picture. Like I've gone to like, um, I don't know, like an outdoor festival pre COVID or whatever. And you go to those milkshake stands and they give you a milkshake. That's gigantic. It's got like an action figure hanging off the side and like a full slice of cake hanging. Do you know what I mean? Like that's to take a picture, right? Like. Yeah, it yeah. comes with a hacky sack right on the yeah. fucking side of the cup. They want you to do that. That's why they make it look yeah, like exactly. that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Sure. So they, like, they, they stack it on. Like, I had this one, like, I went to this place in Toronto, and they had, like, this, I, I can't, it was like it was like a, like a Spanish breakfast thing. I, I can't remember. It's a specific, it's a meal. But um, anyways, it was, like, stacked super high and, like, super colorful. It was a work of art. Like, I had to take a picture of it. I, the guy was looking at me. He's like, you going to take a picture or what? And I'm like, well, <laughs> <laughs> you're too you much know, off if you take a picture. Until you take a picture. <laughs> yeah, you can't dig into it. 
So a uh, question for you, Krista, as well. We, I mean, just wrapped up sort of Christmas season and I know, well, this season was a little bit different, but people tend to be a little bit more generous with their, uh, with their tippage when they go out around Christmas. Sometimes when people go out on Valentine's Day, they'll, uh, they'll tip a little bit more because they want to impress the person that they're with. Have you found, because the one thing I have noticed is Google reviews. You don't see too many shitty Google reviews uh, in restaurants. I, I tend to check some of the old places that I've worked, just out of curiosity. And uh, you don't see very many bad ones. So I think people are being relatively understanding there. Are they uh, opening up their wallets a little bit more? Do you find that because they're aware that there's only 10 people in the restaurant, they're trying to, to make up that difference for you? For or sure. Or for whoever's serving them. Absolutely. People are oh, yeah? Oh, for cool. sure. Cool. That's um, good. Yeah, people, way more people tip on takeout now than ever before. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's huge. Cool. Good. Um, and the people dining in the restaurant, I think, like, really appreciate the fact that you got them a seat. Also, it might have yeah. something to do with the fact that we're only serving 10 people, so you can't really give bad ex bad service. There's no excuse for that. Yeah. Yeah. If you can't probably because you're probably good. <laughs> if you're you know what I mean? They're probably like, with oh. 10 people in the restaurant. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're not good. I said to, I actually said to one of my tables on Saturday because um, I had a no show um, for a reservation for oh. two and someone hadn't filled the seat yet. It did get filled eventually, but it wasn't filled at the time. And I actually had to apologize to the table. I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm stalking you. I just don't have anything else to do. And I feel like I like check on you. The, the man's like, yeah, every bite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah how was that bite how was that one how was that one <laughs> just here in case you choke yeah 27 table checks before the end of the meal so there's so no way that anything could be bad so all of you guys have worked uh, um in the service industry in one one way or another so this is a good question to ask do you guys have like a set rule like how often you check in on a table because i don't know like it got me thinking like is there you know it's a fine line like either you you you're looking around to find somebody to help you or the person keeps coming up and you know, every bite, you know what I mean? Is there, is there like a, like a, like a perfect middle ground? Like do you set like a timer or something? For most of the places, well, actually it sort of depends. It depends on which restaurant chain I worked at. Some mm. places had a little bit, I mean, touching all the tables though was always very important. And then I worked for some, uh, some area managers or managers that, made you do it more than see what seemed necessary. And then I worked for places where they didn't really give a shit. I, I, I was always, I like to be proactive versus reactive in that I don't like stress and I don't like problems. So I usually liked to make sure that everything was fine. Uh, so I didn't have to deal with any issues, but mm. that's, uh, that's my approach. Yeah. Well, but <laughs> you still get the Google review. Like the manager was over at our table too often. Like how was, <laughs> how was that a bad thing? <laughs> it's so true. Fair enough. Fair enough. When I was a server, though, like from sort of from the other side of it, when I was a server, I hated it when I saw a manager at my table because I thought, oh, shit, what's wrong? Like, what, what are they complaining of? Oh, nothing. I was just checking to see if they were OK. Like, it, I mean, that's something else to do. You get scheduled to build or something. <laughs> so. Well, speaking of, of managers and employees, Mark, and uh, I know that this is something that's um, because you've been in, uh, you know, the service industry and you guys, between you and Chris, you have a past. Uh, through it that uh, there is some stuff going on in Hamilton too that's not the most pleasant of the topics but it needs to be discussed right yeah and you I mean not to I mean I don't want to get into too many details about what it is that's going on you know I mean you can check out the Hamilton Spectator articles there's right. been uh, some allegations there's been some allegations against uh, a local Hamilton restaurant owner owns a few different uh, few different places throughout uh, throughout the city and uh, there have been a lot of allegations of just drug use at first of all at a lot of the locations and then you're starting to get a, a lot of um sexual harassment claims that are coming out there's uh, an instagram page that's devoted to this as well that uh has over five thousand followers on it right now of yeah I, I guess you could almost consider this to be hamilton's hamilton restaurants me too movement mm -hmm. where you've got a lot of uh, a lot of people that are claiming um uh, harassment against this particular restaurant owner and just restaurant owners uh, as a whole and uh i mean i can speak from uh i mean over 20 years of restaurant experience krista can speak from probably more than that of restaurant experience of you know, i mean this is not new to the industry this type of um uh, these types of allegations these types of things happening is by by no means is it new anybody that has spent uh, any significant amount of time working in restaurants has probably either seen it or experienced it or knows somebody that has seen it or experienced it. Um, because even though there's a restaurant seemingly on every corner and there's a million people that work at each one, it is a very 
uh, small and tight knit community for the most part of, of people that all know each other. And most restaurants that I worked at, you'd walk in and be like, Oh shit, I know that guy that works in the kitchen. I worked with you at the first restaurant I worked at. So it is, uh, it is a small community. You've got a lot of people that are coming out now with these allegations. So again, not to get too much into it because they are still allegations at this point. Krista, do you see, I guess, do you see this being like a, is this going to change anything or is this just same old, same old. Now it's a spectator article, but it was the same thing that was happening at this particular place three years ago and this particular question. place five years ago. Good question. No, I think I think it's gonna I think it's gonna bring change. I think there's so many people talking about it, um, and so many new allegations coming out. Um, I really mm-hmm. think that it'll we've given the floor to people to come forward and feel comfortable talking about this stuff. Um, And I think that it'll keep the managers and the owners who are doing the stuff that they shouldn't be doing on their toes because social media is huge now, right? Like it it didn't take long. It didn't take long for that group um, on Instagram to have over 5,000 people following it. Yeah. Yep. Agreed. Um, that's one thing that was so effective of the Me Too movement initially and effective of the one in Hamilton right now. I imagine that like um, you know, the 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 people that are that have, have been um behaving badly in this nature uh for a prolonged period of time are probably sweating. And and a lot of the cases when things things like this open up, um it's only a matter of time, right? Um, it's only a matter of time. If you have a reputation, something like that, and it follows you and there's a spotlight and everybody's empowered, which is the most important thing, right? Like you have these victims. Um, I'm not I'm not specifically uh, talking about the, this Hamilton issue because, again, they are allegations yeah. or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, you, it's it's just there's like this thing that happens where all of these, these victims band together and they're empowered. Uh, by something that uh, at one point in their life took a lot of power from them and it's 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 justice you know what i mean it's it's justice in the purest sense it feels like so it, it's really um you know it's 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 you know it's not it's not something that you it's not something that you look on and say oh well it's great to see that because it's not great it's it's a horrific thing from start to finish but at the end of the day like when you're you know i don't i don't know it's it's such a hard thing to really unpack you know there's so many emotions involved and you know here's here's the one thing i wonder is just uh, like how far do these allegations go back pretty pretty how far, far back from what i'm like when does this all start to or when did the, fr- the first story... date back to Roughly. Yeah, the first sort of things that I've seen were about seven seven months ago, seven or eight months ago, where things started to kind of come to light a little bit. Um, be that from just from stories from people that that say that they've been affected by this. Um, I mean, you can if you follow the Google reviews, it's almost an interesting way of, of tracking when when things really went to shit mm-hmm. um, because it was about I'd say about is... three or four weeks ago they they really. This exploded. is a group of very well-known restaurants owned by a very well-known man. Yeah. Yeah. They, yes. They've been successful for a long, long time. So that that's kind of what I'm getting at here. Is yeah. Did, did, did this begin at that time um, or did it start coming to light? This is something I forget my ignorance. I, I'm just asking the question. According to, according to the stories, because there's a list of like accusations that have been put out. Um, they go back a few years, like from the time the restaurant opened. Um, and it's, I mean, it's not just this restaurant. It, I've seen it happen in other places. Um, there have been times in my years of doing this where, you know, um, stuff has happened to me, whether it be by customers or managers. Um, but the people who work in these places live in fear. They live in fear of having their shifts taken away from them, not being able to pay their rent, getting shitty shifts. Like, it's it's terrible, and it's been going on guess, for a long time. And that, that's why I'm asking, is is that yeah. these places had maintained a level of, of, of success, were well-known, right. uh, uh, well, well, uh, they had good, you know, like, high clientele. Uh, they were some of these names were among the well-known eating establishments. If somebody's from out of town and asked where to go, chances are you'd hear one of these restaurants. Or there's, there's a good chance that you would, right? Yeah. So it blows my mind that, that 
could have happened going Sad. on that long and it shows and uh, it is a microcosm of something that i think is in your industry or or you, maybe you can confirm this or maybe you just did moments ago but i mean this is going on everywhere so hopefully more of this sort of stuff starts coming to you, light right i mean you in the 25 years that i've been doing this i've worked for really good people and i've worked for some crappy people you spend a lot of a lot less time working for the crappy people because you realize what's going on it's not a comfortable situation it's not something you want to be a part of and you go but the younger people who are starting out in this like i love doing my job i really do and i don't want the young people who um are just starting out in the industry to kind of start at a place where something like like this happens and then they feel like they don't want to be part of the industry we need good people and we may, may be pushing good people out because of the bad environment that they that's been fostered yeah, for sure and you know, i mean to be clear you know, i mean chris like we've done this for a long time um i mean we, we can both admit that the the conversations and the uh, conduct yeah. of employees at a restaurant is maybe slightly different than say employees at a bank oh yeah um you've got you've got yeah. young You've got young people, you've got young, good looking people that they party while they're working, they party after they're working. There's lots of dating between staff. There's lots of inappropriate conversations, inappropriate comments and all that kind of stuff. And that's not what this particular incident is. Like this is beyond this that, is beyond. this is getting into, is it's not just fun, it's not just harassment, but even still to say that maybe that isn't fun maybe that kind of conduct and those kinds of conversations they're not fun and maybe this is the 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 awakening that the industry needs that to, to have that mindset taken out where people think ah it's just the way this it's just the way the a bar is and yep. it doesn't have to be you can yep. have people some of the smartest and hardest fucking working people i've ever worked with in my life worked in restaurants um so they're not just pretty faces that you know i mean can be treated however like they we're talking about good people. And like you said, the industry needs to have, continue having good people. If you want to go out to a restaurant and have somebody that can handle more than three tables, you need good people. So treat I, them good. And I also think too, like you need to know your audience. Um, it's one thing for me to have that kind of vibe with you or like for me to have that kind of vibe with Sam, for example, then for yeah. us to have that, the same conversation that we have with each other with a brand new employee. You have to know your audience. Like, we're friends. Like, you know what I mean? 17 year old hostess. Yeah, like, like, not yeah, like, I've heard how you two talk about each other, and I hope you don't have that conversation with a first time employee. I have to tell you right now. I have to tell you. I'm not talking about him. I'm talking about his wife's rack. Okay, you said it. And she mentioned yours as well. She said, hey, say hi to Chris, and I miss her sweet teats, is what she said. I quote. So there you go. But that, and again, this is a this is a long term relationship. Like I've known Christopher twenty plus years, and um, we're both uh, mature adults. We're not somebody on their third shift working in a restaurant. It's no. a first ever job, and it's like, hey, you got a nice ass from some guy in the kitchen or something yeah. like that. Like right. he just right. and 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 believe me, that's what I just said. There is not an uncommon thing. So I didn't just come up with that out of nowhere. So it, it is it is an industry that I think could use uh, use a bit of a cleanup in terms of its professionalism. For sure. um, and you see it, with, you see it with the chain restaurants. Like I've worked for, I've worked for Kelsey. So I worked for Kara Foods. I worked for Prime. I worked for, you know what I mean? All the, you know, I mean, Boston Pizza and, and those places, that, though I'm sure this stuff does happen. Um, it is, it is far more watched and, and regulated, um, I think, than just maybe a, a one-off restaurant that, uh, that opens up on James North or something like that. So. Well, of course, like if you have, if you have a corporate restaurant, you have someone work, working in HR that you can go to. So if yes. you're not comfortable in your setting, there's somewhere else to go. But yes. in a small restaurant, it's who are you supposed to report it to? The person that manages you, the person that owns the building, who mm. or owns the restaurant, who employs this manager? Like they obviously like yeah. this person if they hired them. So it's an uncomfortable situation. I mean, at my age, I'm. I don't take any crap anymore. I just say what's on my mind and that's the way it goes. But I have a 14 year old daughter who just started working as a hostess in our restaurant. And like, I can't imagine if she came to me and said, listen, I don't want to work at the pub anymore. I'm going to go, I've applied for a job and I'm going to go work here, fill mm. in the blank to anywhere. 
I'm not there. Yeah. I'm not there to make sure that she's okay. Yeah. There, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. One, just, just, just touching on, on your, uh, your point about no, they're having uh, nobody to turn to uh, when you're in a situation like that internally. Um yeah, that was that was actually one of the complaints. Uh, reading that Manny Ferreira allegations or whatever they were saying, it's like, well, who, like the, the, they asked them, uh, "Did you report the incident to HR?" And the the response was, "How am I supposed to report it to HR when HR is the guy's sister?" You know what I mean? It's like there's not really much you can. There's not really much help internally. It's not like you're working for a giant corporation or anything. You know what I mean? It's it's you're in there and you're kind of on your own. No, and that's got to be scary for these girls that were, yeah. or guys, like, depending on what it is. But, like, it's got to be scary for them. If I go and I complain and I lose my shifts, how am I going to pay my rent? How am I going to pay my way through school? Like, everyone has a different situation. So, yeah, it's, it's just well, tough. I, I mean, given your position now and given how long you've been around, the cool part is, is you've seen the problem. And now you as a manager get to be a part of the solution, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Chris, Good call, Benny. Um, uh, it's been a week, but let me see how my memory is. The Coach and Lantern is open from 12 Tuesday to, 9. to Saturday from 12 to 9. You got it. Did I get it Tuesday to Saturday, too? Yeah. Just uh, Okay. Yep. Um, you before, did, you go, but... before you go, before you go. I did tell you that just so you know, we're open Sundays now. We decided because we, okay. we have so much support, so we open Sundays now. It, oh, Facebook page, awesome. website, that kind of stuff. Do you want to share yeah. that? All of it. Um, we have a Facebook page. It's the Coach and Lantern in Ancaster. Um, you can go there, check out our menu. We're always putting up specials. But come and visit. It's a good time. Yeah. And for St. Patrick's Day, we're opening at 9 a.m. Because oh, we can man. only have 10 nice. people. <laughs> Why not earlier? <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, we're doing That's breakfast. That's a long day of drinking. Okay. Can, can, can we get to the, the very important last question that I have anyway? Of course. Yes. What, 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 do, you, what do you stuff Yorkshire with? Um, anything you want, anything buddy. you want, but um, <laughs> the specialty is um, roast beef, oh, shaved prime rib, mushrooms, beef. onions, gravy, oh, mashed potatoes, or fries, vegetables. Oh, man. Um, and we also do a toad in the hole now, which is the sausages like English sausage stuffed okay. in the Yorkshire pudding. But don't yeah. ask oh, you to hold the plates while I take pictures of that. Exactly. No, <laughs> you hold your own plate. Hold your own plate. <laughs> All right. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us, Krista. We really appreciate it. No problem. It. Awesome. Thanks so much for having me, guys. I really appreciate you guys taking the time and, like, addressing this issue. Um, I feel like it, like I said, it gives these people, like, a floor. Now people are discussing it, and you're getting it out there, and, you know, we appreciate it. Awesome. Absolutely. And uh, very quickly, that, that Hamilton Spectator article, you can check it out. The last line of the article is, this is the start of an important, courageous, uncomfortable, and long overdue conversation, and it's getting louder every day. If you have, uh, a, if you want to report any sexual assault, you can call 905-540-5553 or online at hamiltonpolice.on.ca. You can also call SASHA, that is the Sexual Assault Center of Hamilton in the area, 905-525-4162. All right, thanks, Krista. See ya. See ya. Awesome. That was. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, that was. It's it's nice catching up with her. Um, the Coach and Lantern is a great spot for anybody that's listening or watching and hasn't been there before. Um, we I didn't bring it up in our conversation with Krista because I brought it up last time, but like me and my fiance Bree actually met at the Coach and Lantern, uh, and that's we go there so all the cool. time. And then we also named. No, I, I was looking behind me because I thought my co my cat might be there, but he's not. Um, we we named our cat Coach after the Coach and Lantern as well, so it's a special place for us. And Why don't you name the other cat Lantern? That would have mm. been really impressive. Yeah, yeah, or Yorkshire. <laughs> the Yorkshire, the Yorkshire pudding there too is mm. absolutely out of control. I got it. Oh, it's no so joke. good. So what they do is now. they put they, they they get the Yorkshire pudding and it's this essentially the size of the plate and it's a pub so the yeah. plate is big like the plate plate is really big and they cover it and it's just ridiculous. I got it for lunch one day. I mean, it knocked me on my ass because. You can't really eat like that heavy of a meal. That's not a lunch you know item. I mean? <laughs> but I did it. I'm like, I'm here. That's what I'm getting. Um, and it was, yeah, you know, I was just in bliss for the rest of the day. I got to give that know. a shot. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Yep. Anytime, anytime you're telling a story about like a, a drunk guy at a bar, you don't know. Do you always name him Dave? <laughs> I, d I just went with Dave. I was close, though. It was Dawn. Right? 
<laughs> I'm gonna go with Don from now on. We're damn close. <laughs> there's a pub. There's a there's a pub called. Um, I, it's actually also in Ancaster. I gotta get the name of it, but they have wings there from mm. their regular. And guess what? Their his name is the regular's name. It's not one of the names God. that you suggested already, but it's it's so close that it's ridiculous. Gord? No, Ron Dean. 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 <laughs> So it's D it's, a, it's a D names. Yeah, it's D names. Yeah, weird. Like weird. What was the guy from Cheers called? Mm. What was his name? Norm. Norm and uh, Cliff. Cliff. Yeah. yeah no Ds there. That How kind of busts up the Ds. Although, yeah. I like, I mean, if you were a regular at a bar and you had your own seat and everything, if your name were Duke, you'd be kicking ass in life. You'd be, you'd be so winning. I think if your name is Duke in general, you could pretty much be doing anything. You could work at Walmart and your uh, name is Duke and you're the best fucking Duke, greeter there. You are. <laughs> you are. You are an instant winner if your name is Duke. There's just nothing. Why don't we all name our kids Duke to give them a damn chance yeah. in life? I mean, seriously. Yeah. And not even a nickname, like actual name. Like I want that on the birth certificate. Yeah, absolutely. So here's so here's a here's a crazy, absolutely crazy radio story that I remember like the last couple episodes. Um, you guys are talking about like your first, um, uh, your first experiences on live radio and like talking about college and stuff is all, is like a, a classic radio, uh, ra inside radio conversation. <clears throat> this one happened in Nova Scotia. Um, so essentially there was this, this guy, he's been sentenced now. So, um, it's, it's not alleged or anything. This, this has actually happened. It's safe to talk about. He, um, hold on. Let me try to get his name. Matthew Gerald Kennedy has been sentenced to six months in jail and two years probation for a hit and run. So this guy did a hit and run essentially on his way while well, he was on his way to school. <clears throat> okay. So a hit and run. He, he hit this, this pedestrian, killed the guy, continued to go to school. He's a journalism student, right? So he's a journalism student. And, and when he was at school, he, when he was live on the air, he reported on the hit and run himself while he was on the radio. Oh, that is diabolical. Isn't that fucking crazy? That Isn't is that diabolical. <laughs> fucking yeah. Citizen Kane makes I'll make my own news. Thank you very much. Wow. <laughs> there's hey, no war. I'll there's, give them a war. There's, there's going to great lengths for a scoop, but there's going to really great lengths for wow. a scoop. So he, yeah. yeah, he didn't, he didn't, like, I, stop. Like, he was reading radio newscasts that morning as part of a broadcast journalism program. The hit and run was one of the top stories in each of those newscasts. Like, so did he just, get the, really? did he get the scoop on his own apprehension? Mm, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did he actually <laughs> walk in the studio during the newscast? Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Jesus! Uh, what an insane, what an insane, insane, insane story. Um, what grade did he get, though? Just out of curiosity. Oh, I have, I have no. Did he do well? I, I imagine no he did quite well. I mean, you know, yeah, I, I have no idea. I don't know. He, he was just absolutely insane. He definitely, um, he's definitely failed over in life. I don't know what he did, how he did in school, but he failed in life. I, I don't see his journalism career going a whole lot far. So there's there's one more there's one more internet story I got to throw your way. I told Mark about this before we started recording, but I'm curious to see what Ben's reaction to it is. Um, so there's this is this one this one was on TikTok, but it's being reported on the Toronto Sun and all over the place. Um, this this TikTok user says that she regrets. It's a bad tattoo. Essentially, it's essentially a bad tattoo story. But okay. what's funny about this is the the the, the pandemic. The, the the advent of the pandemic in 2020 completely changed what her tattoo meant, right? To make it something bad. So it's on her forearm. So it's plainly visible for anybody to see if she's wearing like anything other than a long sleeve shirt um, or like fucking medieval gauntlets or some shit. And the, the <laughs> <laughs> and the, um, so she got this tattoo in February of 2020. So right before the pandemic was a really big deal, right? And the tattoo says, courageously and radically refuse to wear a mask. So the, How big's it, her it, arm? <laughs> I know. It's like this little whatever. It's like this little dainty writing or whatever. But the thing is, obviously, she's talking about like a metaphorical mask. Like that was the idea. Like she bought, she bought this tattoo to like, you know, always represent yourself, you know, never be phony. 
And now she says she can't go outside <laughs> without like a long sleeve shirt. Like she can't, she has to wear long sleeves every, everywhere she goes because she, she looks like a lunatic. This is like that person who is hiding their, their tattoo of Kevin Spacey on their back. <laughs> <laughs> my Bill Cosby tattoo. My, my that Bill I have. Cosby tattoo. <laughs> I got a Cosby <laughs> sleeve. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that's, I saw oh, a picture well. today too. I guess I'm just rattling off internet stories, but um, there's a picture today from the Hamilton Public Library. Um, I'm not sure if I can actually find it. Maybe I can. Um, talk, talk amongst yourself. Let's see if I can find this picture before, because I didn't. I didn't intend on. I didn't want to out the Hamilton okay. Library because I like them and they're very nice. Um, let's see if I can have one. It's very yeah. While, while you're looking, uh, has anyone noticed how I've strategically tried to? eliminate the cat tree from the the shot only because <laughs> like it's full on now that's a cat family there's the tree oh yeah it's as tall it's it's like up to my chin the damn thing and the cats are uh, they're they're running the joint and the <laughs> funny thing is i uh, like chris you, you've had cats they're a handful right oh yeah they yeah. can be <laughs> way worse than they you. certainly can be that's for sure no way mine has worse gone into this weird phase right now they're like teenagers or something they're just they're they're not entirely with it and uh right right up until you can do it's like clockwork until about 8 30 they're from from about four till eight they're completely docile like you can you can pick them up and fold them and and knead them like clay and they don't do anything and then at 8 30 it's like the end of the Flintstones and the bell goes off and they're sliding down the fucking dime time. and they're nuts, man. They're like friggin' Larry, lazy eyes, man, or laser eyes. They're, they're, they're nuts. And they've been circling the table. You may remember they threw me in flight mode a couple of weeks back. Yeah. So, yeah. well, uh, if it happens, just, just saying. They're, so I've got this, I got this video sure. up. I got this video up. I don't, let's not, this isn't going to be like, I'm not, I can't confirm that this is actually done by HPL. You know what I mean? The Hamilton public library. It could just be a gag. It's, it is what it is. We'll just just watch it without the sound. You don't need sound. Yeah, go ahead. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, all, yeah. wow, the name just of came all the things to celebrate during that month. <laughs> I feel like it's probably. I feel like it's probably a gag, but yeah. his his name just uh, came up uh, in, in a joke moments ago. It, it's a picture. Uh, in case you're listening along, uh, we hope you are. Uh, mm-hmm. of a Black History Month display at the library, and uh, Bill Cosby's autobiography shows up on the bottom shelf. It was Along with other prominent Black people writers. throughout history yeah, that have done amazing things. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, I don't it's... know. I mean... I didn't see OJ's fucking book on there. No. <laughs> if, I... <laughs> if I did it. What I, that's what it's called. If I did it, I, I know. Did it. I know. Here's how I would have done it if I did it. Good God. <laughs> what a dick. Uh, right on, gentlemen. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So uh, we're going to uh, take it to uh, a whole nother level here. We're going to hop on Facebook Live in uh, just moments, actually, and give that a shot for the very first time. But uh, in the meantime, uh, stay close with us on Facebook. Uh, and remember, guys. I don't know. I don't know if you'll have this in your in your minds, but we'll be on camera on Facebook Live. We're gonna play some sound effects and see if we can guess what they are. Um, but remember to look into the camera. It's hard. It's freaking hard. Because <laughs> I'm looking at you, and then I don't feel like it's just, it's not natural. But if you're you watching. Know, Trying to be professional if, if, and shit. If if you're if you're watching the podcast at all, um, or listening to the podcast, and you want to participate in some of our live Facebook games that we're going to yeah. be playing, uh, just follow us on Facebook. It's uh, at Radio underscore Sheep on Facebook, or I think it's at BSR Podcast. It's one of those things. Um, and just click to that, and then we'll just keep an eye on the Facebook page because you never know when we're going to pop up. We're like. Uh, 
yeah i guess hey when we go on video too i got my marty mcfly shirt on that's no, exciting oh my god Please. show it off before we're done real quick show this damn shirt off <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll look. I'll make it look like it's a vest. There. Oh, my. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Photorealistic. <laughs> Marty McFly shirt. Thanks for One listening. And and thanks for listening. And sorry for what you saw. Mark Lefave and Chris Brown. Join the conversation at BSR Podcast on Facebook and at Radio underscore Sheep on Instagram and Twitter.